Hey guys, your objectives for this video is to find the unbalanced snow load, the roof ed edge load for the unbalanced case, and also draw the snow load diagram. So, just like before for the balanced case, the snow load, the roof snow load is given as S, which is S, G, C, E, mu, I. It's exactly the same thing for the balanced case. Okay, so it's the same formula. Just to see what we've got already, we've got the ground snow load of 13.7 kPa. We found that in one of the first videos we did. So that hasn't changed, 13.7 kPa. And we also found in the previous video, CPE, CE as 0.6, okay? So I've got CE as 0.6, but that is actually not correct. CE is 0.95, and we'll see why in a second, okay? So you'd think that the CE is unchanged, but it actually is changing, okay? Remember, CE was dependent on the windswept roof. So obviously our roof isn't changing for our problem. So something else is happening to change CE, so we'll see that in a sec. Alright, so step one is to find the shape coefficient mu i. Alright, so CG we know, mu i we know, CE is changing for some reason, we'll see now why. So, if we look back at our problem, our problem was geo pitched, it's in an alpine region, and now we're looking at the unbalanced case. So, if I show you a diagram, again, this is our problem, we're in an alpine region, Parish Valley, it's geo pitched, and we're looking at the unbalanced case now. So, if we go to page 26 in figure 6.3, so page 26, okay, so we saw this before, for the geo pitch roofs is what we're dealing with, we have these cases over here, so let me zoom in for you, give me a sec, okay, so, we had... Now we're looking at the unbalanced case. So you can see we're going to be looking at that when it's just loaded there. So that's the snow on this side, and that's the snow on this side. So you look at them separately when you're doing the unbalanced case. Now for the unbalanced case, you can see we're looking at mu subscript 2, and mu subscript 2 for the different angles, alpha 1 and alpha 2. So when we did the balanced case, we looked at mu 1. Now we're looking at mu 2. So our mu i is mu 2 now. Now there's a formula right at the bottom here 